Hey guys, Bo is back here with another classic movie review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 1993 crime drama, Beyond the Law. This movie stars Charlie Sheen as a cop called Dan Saxon. He is tasked to go undercover as a biker to infiltrate this murderous motorcycle gang that's led by Michael Masden. So yeah, I'd not actually heard of this movie before. Um, I recently reviewed another Charlie Sheen movie and uh, looked at his filmography, stumbled upon this, checked out the synopsis and given the plot involved an undercover operation, I immediately uh, was intrigued. I actually then went on to YouTube, watched the Beyond the Law trailer and I must say, I actually wasn't too impressed with what I saw. Having now watched the movie, it's uh, safe to say that the trailer for this film uh, was pretty poor and it doesn't really portray the film like it actually is. But anyways, Michael Masden plays Blood. He is the head of this biker gang. He is running arms deals and uh, distributing illegal narcotics across the state of Arizona. The Arizona police want to crack down on the trafficking and all the illegal activities going on. They figure the only way to do this would be to put a man undercover on the inside. So then this is where Charlie Sheen comes in, Dan Saxon. So Saxon is recruited by the assistant attorney called Mr. Price. Dan is hesitant at first, but yeah, basically goes along with the plan. You know, at the start of the movie, we see Dan Saxon, the character, having a nightmare while he uh, was you know, sleeping in his car. We see these uh, flashbacks throughout the film of Dan's traumatic childhood, where basically he was beaten by his father, and that's you know, had some serious, serious psychological effects on the guy. So yeah, you know, thinking about it, it's pretty clear even before Dan actually takes on the job going undercover, we see that he's clearly dealing with some personal issues. As the movie goes on, Dan starts losing his focus on the mission and he almost has a mental breakdown from the pressures of the job. His mental health starts to really suffer and we see even more of these traumatic flashbacks of his childhood. You know, I've got to say, Charlie Sheen is good in this movie. He's not fantastic. I have seen him deliver better performances in other movies. But still, here, he is believable as a cop going undercover and slowly losing his identity due to the past trauma that the character experienced as a child. It's not... Well, even though Charlie Sheen does comedy, is known for comedy, this is a fairly straight role for him. The character is humorous at times, but it's not overbearing and it's not hammy, if you know what I mean. The backstory given to Sheen's character was well done and it gave the character more substance, having been an abused child who is clearly still holding on to his past. It does make me wonder though, how Charlie Sheen's character was recruited as a cop in the first place. Like, how is he able to join the force given this life altering experience as a child? You know, what he went through as a kid would have seriously messed up anyone psychologically. So that would likely hinder their ability to become a normal member of society. So yeah, I, don't know, I just found that a bit strange how, you know, he has such a, clearly a terrible childhood, but was able to overcome that and become a cop. Yeah, I, don't know, I guess it can happen, it just seemed a little bit peculiar to me. Um, in terms of themes, we do explore identity and how far a person can go undercover before losing it, basically. Sheen does this pretty well towards the end of the movie where the character snaps multiple times. He's really aggressive, he's over the top, he can't contain himself, he can't contain his emotions. And there was also a theme of redemption in this movie. 
the Dan Saxon character is haunted by his childhood. We later find out in one of the last flashbacks that Dan actually killed his father in self-defense. The trauma has manifested itself over the years with Dan and he's never fully recovered. It's only when Dan starts to lose his mind while undercover is he basically able to confront his past. The movie has an overall serious tone, but there is definitely humour inserted throughout this movie, which I thought was okay, but didn't really need to be there, if you know what I mean. The movie gets very serious and quite dark towards the end when Michael Madsen's character, Blood, shoots a innocent female shopkeeper. Once the shopkeeper dies, the film definitely takes a more darker turn. And thinking about it, I kind of wish... Uh, the movie had started off like that, with that kind of darker tone at the very beginning. I think it would have made for a better film overall. You know, this was, or this came out in 1993. By this point, Sheen had done a lot of successful comedy movies as well. So, I don't know, I'm just thinking maybe the movie studios were like, hey, you know, we've got to insert more comedy, we've got to have this guy do some one-liners and stuff like that, which, but given the seriousness of the story, especially the background of the child, yeah, I think it didn't really need to be there. And yes, uh, this movie came out in 1993. I've got to say, it definitely has a real late 80s vibe to it, in terms of the vibe and the production design. Not just with the, uh, the look of the film, but also with the music that was used throughout. We get a lot of kind of heavy metal, hard rock, late 80, 80s kind of stuff. I, you know, when I think about it, I guess, you know, it does suit the biker culture of the time. But if you told me this movie was released in 1989, given the look, style, fashion, music, everything, I would have believed you. You know, to say it came out in 1993, I did actually do a double take and say, really, 93? Because, so, in actuality, thinking about it another way, you know, I, I did enjoy this movie, and it is a good movie, but... It definitely dates itself, even in 1993, given some of the other films that come out that year or even earlier. This, yeah, this definitely had a much more kind of older look to it. So in terms of the, uh, the dislikes of this movie, I guess the main one would have to be the love interest, Renee, and that was played by Linda Forentino. She's a good actress and I do really like her, but to be honest, her character had no real purpose being in this movie. You know, the Renee character was a photographer chronicling the biker gang's lifestyle to put into a magazine or something like that. I mean, just thinking about it, like, yeah, that's okay, no problem, but given the fact that the gang was so heavily involved in illegal arms and drug trafficking. I wouldn't imagine that the gang would be too pleased with a photographer going around taking photos of their activities. So the premise of the character, I just didn't buy it really. Now with that said, Florentino did a good job. She gave a solid performance. As I said, I like her as an actress. But yeah, I'm still scratching my head as to why the character is really there. The story for me was interesting enough with a guy that's got this, you know, tra trauma, he's got his personal demons and then he's being pushed, going undercover to infiltrate a biker gang. That story enough was, was, was enough for me to, you know, be hooked on it. And then we have many scenes, Renee and Dan together, and it just didn't really go anywhere and it just slowed down the movie. And also, just remembering, in terms of the final act of the film, Renee, the character, is not even really involved. So it doesn't really make any sense. It was just, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, at the end of the film, it's not like they're together. I mean, it just, it just didn't make sense. And uh, yeah, really good actress, but didn't like the character being in the film. There is a scene where Dan meets Renee's six-year-old daughter. They go and come into the kitchen. Dan is making some food. He's showing off his poor cooking skills. 
and it's this light-hearted scene where Dan tries to impress the, the kid. And I don't know, man, it was just like a, a scene out of a family drama. It just didn't really fit with the, the vibe of the overall film. It just was kind of off compared to the rest of the film. And we've got Charlie Sheen doing a, an Italian accent going, ha, 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 I'm in the kitchen. And it's like, OK, you know. And, you know, it would make more sense if the kid was then used later on in a plot point in, you know, in the final act. These characters are not even there. You know, it's a it's a one on one showdown between Michael Madsen's character Blood and uh, Charlie Sheen, so it just really didn't make much sense to me. And I didn't really like that scene, to be honest with you. It, it, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with the scene, but it was just like, what was the point? It's almost like they were kind of like padding out the film. I don't know why, like to reach a certain runtime or something like that. As I said, it, you know, they could have easily cut a good ten minutes out of this film. And it would have made it better, for sure. Another dislike I want to mention is the humour. Now, overall, this movie has a fairly serious tone and is pretty grounded. But, you know, throughout the movie, there were several minor comedic moments that I just thought, nah, didn't really need to be there. The movie never veers off into full comedy, but there were definitely a few moments where it comes close. Ultimately, I wish they had just scrapped all the comedy aspects from the movie. Maybe like the filmmakers are trying to balance out some of the more harsher visuals and violence with the comedy. And overall, it was a you know, it was a okay balance. But yeah, I mean. There's a much better movie. If, if this could be recut, just take out some of the, the humour, this really would have been a lot better. But as I said, they tried to maybe balance it out. I'm not too sure the reasoning behind it, but yeah, the comedy, the humour didn't really need to be there. So, ratings. I am going to be rating this movie a 4.5 out of 10. Overall, this is an enjoyable two-hour movie that it's worth watching at least once, especially if you're into kind of undercover crime thrillers, if you like that kind of genre of film, this is definitely worth checking out. I think most people would, would enjoy it. And if you're into motorcycles, if you know, you're into kind of Harley Davidson, things like that, you know, once again, I think you'd get a kick out of this film. I can see why this movie was kind of lost in the shuffle and kind of forgotten. It's a solid film worth at least checking out, but there is no real standout performances. There's no real standout, amazing, whoa, kind of crazy scenes or anything. It's it's a solid drama. It was cool to see Charlie Sheen in this role, going undercover and, you know, having long hair and facial hair and changing his identity and also losing it. And, you know, there was some really, he, he gave a serviceable performance. But, it, you know, it wasn't Oscar worthy or, you know, the action was good, maybe if I'm nitpicking, the action, given the year it was made, 92, 93, it was all good, there was just nothing amazing about it, and it's just there kind of thing. Is it worth checking out? Yes. If you're a fan of Charlie Sheen, give it a go. You know, it's like a movie that if you was like at home, or you came home one night and you was drunk and you just turned on the TV, and the movie was playing, you know, it would be, oh, okay, you know, I can check this out, you know, it's entertaining enough. Yeah, nothing super fantastic, but it does its job.